Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated, the shareholders of Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated are gaining net worth during 2005 was $5.6 billion, which increased in the Berkshire Book value of both our Class A and Class B stock by 6.4% over the last 41 years. That is since present management took over. Book value has grown from 19 to dollars to $59,377, a rate of 21.5% compounded annually. All figures used in this report apply to Berkshire's A shares. The successor is the only stock that the company had outstanding before 1996. The B shares have economic interest that equal to one third of that of A. Berkshire had a decent year in 2005. We initiated five acquisitions, two of which have yet to close, and most of our operating subsidiaries were prospered. Even our insurance business in its entirety we did well, though Hurricane Katrina inflicted record loss in both Berkshire and the industry. We estimate our loss from Katrina at $2.5 billion in her ugly Sisters, Rita and Wilma cost us an additional nine billion dollars. Credit Geico and its real and CEO Tony nicely for our seller insurance results in a disaster ridden year. Our no statistics stand out in just two years ago. Geico improved its productivity by 32%. Remarkably, employment fell by 4%, even as policy count grew by 26%, and more gains are in store when we drive unit costs down in such a dramatic manner. We can offer greater value to our customers to pay off. Last year, Geico gained market share, earned commendable profits, and struck its brand. If you have a new son and grandson in 2006, name him Tony. My goal is in writing this report is to give you the information you need to estimate Berkshire's intrinsic value. I say estimate because calculation of intrinsic value, though all important necessarily and precise and often interestingly wrong, the more uncertain the future of the business, the more possibly there is that the calculation will be widely off base. For an explanation of intrinsic value, see pages 77 to 78. Here, Berkshire has some advantages, a wide variety of relatively stable earning streams combined with great liquidity and minimum debt. These factors mean that Berkshire's intrinsic value can be more precisely calculated than can the intrinsic value of most companies. Yet, if precision is aided by Berkshire's financial characteristics, the job of calculating intrinsic value has been made more complex by the mere presence of so many earnings. Streams back in 1965, when we owned this only small textile operation, the task of calculating intrinsic value was a snap. Now, we own 68 distinct businesses with widely disparate operating financial characteristics. This array of unrelated enterprise coupled with their massive investment holdings makes it impossible for you to simply examine or consolidate financial statements and arrive at an informed estimate of intrinsic value. We have uh, attempted to ease this problem by clustering our business into four logical groups, each of which we discuss later in this report. In this discussion, we will provide the key figures for both the group and its important components. Of course, the value of Berkshire may be either greater or less than the sum of these four parts. The outcome depends on whether our many units function better or worse by being part of larger enterprise and whether capital allocation improves or deteriorates when it's under the direction of a holding company. In other words, does Berkshire ownership bring anything to the party or would our shareholders be better off if they directly own shares in each of our 68 business? These are important questions but ones that you will have to answer for yourself. Before we look at our individual business, however, let's review two sets of figures that show where we've come from and where we are now. The first set is the amount of investment, including cash and cash equivalents we own per share basis. In making this a calculation, we exclude investment held in financial operations because these are largely offset by borrowings. Year 1965. 1975, 1985, 1995, compound growth rate, 1965-2005, compound growth rate, 1995-2005, net of minority interests, per share investments, $4, 159, 2407, 21,817, 74,129, 78.0%, 13.0%. In addition to these marketable securities, which, which minor exceptions are held in our insurance companies, we own a wide variety of insurance business. Below, we show the pre-tax earnings, excluding goodwill amortization of these business, again, on a per share basis. Year, 19, per year, and per share earnings, 1965, $4, $9.75, $4, $9.85, $52, $9.95, $175, $2,005, $2,441. Compound growth rate, 1965, $2,005, 70.2%. Compound growth rate, 1985, $2,005, 30.2%. Pre tax and net of minor interests. When growth rates are under discussion, we'll pay you to be suspicious to why the beginning and terminal years have been selected. If either year was aberrational, any calculation of growth will be distorted. In particular, a base year in which earnings report can produce a breathtaking but meaningless growth rate. And the table above, however, the base of the year of 1965 was abnormally good. Berkshire earned more money in that year than it did in all but one of the previous 10. As you can see from the two tables, comparative growth rates of Berkshire two elements of value have changed in the last decade. Our result reflecting of our ever-increasing emphasis on business acquisition. Nevertheless, Charlie Munger and Berkshire Vice Chairman and my partner, I want to increase the figures in both tables. In this ambition, we hope metaphorically to avoid the fate of elderly couple who had been romantically challenged for some time as they finished dinner on their 50th anniversary. However, the wife simulated by soft music, wine and candlelight felt the long absent tickled and merely suggested to her husband that they go upstairs and make love he agonized for a moment and replied I can do one or other but not both acquisitions over the years 
Our current business in aggregate should deliver modest growth in operating earnings, but they will not in themselves produce truly satisfactory gains. We will need major acquisitions to get that job done. And it's quite the quest. 2005 was encouraging. We agreed to five purchases, two that were completed last year, one that closed after year end, and two others that we expect to close soon. None of the deals involved the issuance of British shares. That's a crucial point. But the often ignored point, when a manager proudly acquires another company for stock, the shareholders of the acquirer are concurrently selling part of their interest in everything they own. I've made this kind of deal a few times myself, and on balance, my actions have cost you money. Here are last year's purchases. On June 13th, we bought medical protective company MedPro, a 106-year-old medical malpractice insurer based in Fort Wayne. Malpractice insurance is tough to underrate and has proved to be a great year for many insurers. MedPro nevertheless should do well. It will have the attitude and advantage of all Berkshire insurers share, where an underwriting discipline trumps all other goals. Additionally, as part of Berkshire, MedPro's financial strength, but for exceeding that of its competitors, quality external doctors, the long to settle claims will not end up back on their doorstep because their insurer failed. Finally, the company has a smart, energetic CEO, Tim Kennedy, who instinctively thinks like a Berkshire manager. <clears throat> Forest River, our second acquisition, closed on August 31, a couple of months earlier on June 21. I received a two-page fax telling me point by point why Forest River met the acquisition criteria we set forth. On page 25 of this report, I had not before heard of the company, a recreational vehicle manufacturer with $1.6 billion of sales, nor of Pete Legal, its owners and managers, but the fax made sense, and I immediately asked for more figures. These came the next morning, and that afternoon, I repeat an offer on June 28. We shook hands on the deal. Pete is a remarkable entrepreneur. Some years back, he sold his business when the far smaller than today to an LBO operator, who promptly began telling him to run the place. Before long, Pete left their business soon sunk into bankruptcy. Pete then purchased it. You can be sure that I won't be telling Pete how to manage his operation. Forest River has 60 plants, 5,400 employees, and has consistently gained share in the RV business while also expa- expanding into other areas, such as Boast. Pete is 61 and definitely in the inner acceleration mode. Read the piece from RV Business that accompanies the report, and you'll see why Pete and, Ber- and Berkshire made for each other. On November 12, 2005, an article ran in the Wall Street Journal dealing with Berkshire's unusual acquisition managerial practices, and it Pete declared it might, was easier to sell my business to renew my license. In New York City, Kathy Baron Tamrez read the article and stuck, struck a chord. On November 21, she sent me a letter that began, As president of Business Wire, I'd like to introduce you to my company, as I believe <clears throat> it fits the profile of Berkshire Hathaway of subsidiary companies as detailed in a recent Wall Street Journal article. By the time I finished Kathy's two-page letter, I felt Business Wire in British I was a fit. I particularly liked her pundimulate paragraph. We were on tight ship and keep an associates pending under wraps. No secretaries or management leaders here, yet we'll invest big dollars to gain technological advantages and move the business forward. I promptly gave Kathy a call before long British had reached agreement with Business Wire's controlling shareholder, Lori Loki, who founded the company in 1961 and who had just made Kathy CEO. I love success stories like Lori's today. 78, he has built a company that disseminates information in 150 countries for 20 5,000 clients. A story like those of many entrepreneurs who have selected Berkshire's home for their life's work is an example of what can happen when a good idea, a talented individual, and hard work converge. In December, we agreed to buy 81% of applied underwriters, a company that offers combination of payroll services and workers' compensation shares to small businesses. A majority of applied customers are located in California. In 1998, though, when the company had 12 employees, it acquired the Omaha-based operation with 24 employees that offered a somewhat similar service. Sid Frank and Steve Menzies, who have built Applied Remarkables business, concluded that the Omaha had many advantages and operational base. A brilliant insight I might add in today, 400 of the company's 479 employees are located here. Less than a year ago, Applied entered into a large insurance contract with the GJN, the extraordinary manager of National Indemnity Insurance Division. Ajit was impressed by Sid and Steve, and they liked Berkshire's method of operation, so we decided to join forces. We are pleased that Sid and Steve retained 19% of Applied. They started on a true string only 12 years ago, and it will be fun to see what they can accomplish with Berkshire's backing. Last spring, Mid-American Energy, our 80.5% owned subsidiary, agreed to buy Pacific Corp, a major electric utility serving six western states. An acquisition of this sort requires many a regular approvals, but we've not obtained these. I'd expect to close this transaction soon. Berkshire will then buy $3.4 billion of Mid-American's common stock, which Mid-American will supplement with $1.7 billion of borrowing to complete the purchase. You can expect to earn outsized profit in your utilities, but the industry offers owners the opportunity to deploy large sums at fair returns, and therefore it makes good sense for Berkshire. A few years back, I said that we hope to make some very large purchases in the utility field. Not the plural. We'll be looking for more. In addition to buying these new operations, we continue to make bolt-on acquisitions. Some aren't so small. Shaw, our carpet operations, spent about $550 million last year on two purchases. 
at further its vertical integration and should improve its profit margin in the future. Extra and Clinton Homes also made value-enhancing acquisitions. Unlike many business buyers, Berkshire has no exit strategy. We buy the keep. We do through have an entrance strategy looking for business in this country abroad that meets our six criteria and are available at a price that will produce a reasonable return. If you have a business that fits, give me a call like a hopeful teenager. I'll be waiting for my phone. Insurance, let's not talk about four sectors and start with our square business. What counts here is the amount of float and its cost over time. For new readers, let me explain. Float is money that doesn't belong to us but that we temporarily hold. Most of our float arises because premiums are paid up front, though the service <coughs> we provide insurance protections delivered over a period that usually covers a year. And two loss events that occur today do not always result in our immediately paying claims because it sometimes takes many years for a loss to be reported. Asbestos losses would be an example. Negotiated and settled, the $20 million of float that came with our 1967 entry into insurance has now increased, both by way of internal growth and acquisitions to $49 billion. Float is wonderful if it doesn't come at high price. Its cost is determined by underwriting results, meaning how the expenses of losses will ultimately pay compare with the premiums we have received. We ensure an interesting underwriting profit that has been the case at Berkshire in about half of the 39 years we have been in insurance business. Float is better than free. In such years, we are actually paid for holding other people's money. For most insurers, however, life has been far more difficult. In aggregate, the property casualty industry almost invariably operates at an underwriting loss, winning that loss is large float because we spent it sometimes devastatingly so. In 2004, our float cost us less nothing than it told you that we had a chance to absent a mega catastrophe. Of no cost flow in 2005, but we had a mega catas- mega cat as a specialist in the coverage. Berkshire suffered hurricane losses of $30.4 billion. Nevertheless, our float was costly in 2005 because of superb results we had in our other insurance activities, particularly Geico. Auto policies in force grew by 12.1% at Geico, again increasing its market share of U.S. private passenger auto business from about 5.6% to about 6.1%. Auto insurance is a big business. Each share point equates to $1.6 billion in sales. While our brand strength is not quantifiable, I believe it also grew significantly when Berkshire acquired control of Geico in 1996. Its annual advertising expenditures were $31 million. Last year, we were up to $502 million, and I can't wait to spend more. Our advertising works because we have a great story to tell. More people can save money by insuring with us than in the case with any other national carrier offering policy stall. Commerce and specialized auto insurance do particularly well for applicants fitting into their niches. Also, because our national competitors will use systems that differ from ours, they will sometimes beat our price. Last year, we achieved by far the highest conversion rate. The percentage of internet and phone quotes ch- turned into sales. In our history, this is powerful evidence that our prices are more attractive relative to the competition. Never before test us by going geico.com or by calling 800-847-7536. Be sure to indicate to our shareholder because that fact will often qualify you for a discount. I told you last year about Geico's entry into New Jersey in August 2004. Drivers in the state love us. Our retention rate... <laughs> There are for new policyholders running higher than any other state, and by sometime in 2007, Geico is likely to become the third largest auto insurer in New Jersey. There is elsewhere our low cost allow prices that will lead to steady gains and profitable business. That simple formula immediately impressed me 55 years ago when I first discovered Geico in date at age 21. I read an article about the company it's for produced on page 24 when its market value is $7 million. As you can see, I called Geico the security I like best, and that's what I still call it. We have made sure the insurance operations at General Re and National Indemnity, the former, run by Joe Brandon and Tide Montross, later by Ajit Jai in both units performed well in 2005 considering the extraordinary hurricane losses that battered the industry. It's an open question whether atmospheric, oceanic, or other casual factor have dramatic change of frequency or intensity of hurricanes. Recent experiences worry some. We know for insurance that in 100 years before 2004, about 59 hurricanes of Category 3 strength or greater hit the southeastern and south Gulf Coast states, and that only three of these Category 5s. We further know that in 2004, there were the three Category 3 storms that hammered those areas and that these were followed by four more. In 2005, one of them, Katrina, and most destructive hurricane in industry history. Moreover, there were three Category 5s near the coast last year that fortunately weakened before landfall. Was this onslaught of more frequent and more intense storms? Really not anomaly, or was it ch- caused by changes in climate, weather, temperature, or other variables we don't fully understand? Uh, could these factors be developing a matter that will soon produce disasters to every Katrina? Joe, Ajit, and I don't know the answers to these all-important questions. What we don't do know is that our ignorance means that we must follow the courses prescribed by Pascal in his famous wager about the existence of God. As you may recall, he concluded that since he didn't know the answer, his personal gain loss ratio dictated an affirmative conclusion. So ga- guided, we concluded we should now write mega cat policy only with prices far higher than prevailed last year. And then not only with an aggregate exposure that would not cause us to shut of ships and some important variable. 
produce far more costly storms in the near future's lesser degree. We felt this way after 2004 and cut back our writings. When prices didn't move, now our caution has intensified. The prices seem appropriate. However, we continue to have both ability and the ability to be the largest writer of mega cat coverage in the world. Our smaller insurers with MedPro added to the full deliver. Truly outstanding results last year, however, that you see in the table below does not do full justice to the performance. That's because we increased the loss of reserves of MedPro by about $125 million immediately after our purchase. No one knows with any precision what amount will be required to pay the claims we inherited. Medical malpractice insurance is a long tail line, meaning that claims often many years to sell. In addition, there are other losses that have occurred, but that we won't even hear about for a small time. One thing, though, we have learned the hard way after many years in the business. Their price and insurance are far symmetrical. You are lucky if you get one that is pleasant for every 10 that go other way. Two, often, however, insurers react to and loss, problems with optimism. They behave like the fellow in switchblade. Fight who, after his opponent has taken might to swipe at his throws, exclaimed, You never touched me. His adversary replied, Just wait until you try to shake your head. Excluding the reserves we added for prior periods, MedPro wrote an underrated profit, and our other primary companies in aggregate had an underrated profit of $324 million on 1000 $270 million of volume. That is an extraordinary result. And our thanks go to Rod Eldred of Berkshire Hathaway, Home State Companies, John Kaiser of Central States Indemnity, Tom Nernay of U.S. Liability, Don Toll of Kansas Bankers Surety, and Don Worser of National Indemnity. Here's the overall tally in our underwriting flood for each major sector of insurance. Insurance operations, John Ray, BH Reinsurance, Skyco, other primary total, includes MedPro from June 3, 2005, in millions. Underwriting profit, loss, 2005, 334 dollars, 1,069, 1,121, 234, 53 dollars. 2004, 3, 417, 970, 161, 1,551 dollars. Year and flow, 2005, 22,920 dollars, 16,233, 6,692, 3,442, 49,287 dollars. 2004, 23,120 dollars, 15,778 5960 1736 46094 dollars Regulated utility business, we have an 8.5 field diluted interest in Mid-American Energy Holding, which owns a wide variety of utility operations. The largest of these are one, Yorkshire Electricity and Northern Electric, whose 3.7 million electric customers make it the third largest distributor of electricity in the UK. Two, Mid-American Energy, which serves 706,000 electric customers, primarily in Iowa, and three, Kern River and Northern International Pipelines, which carry 7.8 of their natural gas consumed in the US. One, our Pacific Corp acquisition closest, we will add 1.6 million electric consumers in the six western states, with Oregon and Utah providing us most business, this transaction will increase Mid American revenue by $3.3 billion and its asset by $14.1 billion. The Public Utility Holding Company Act, PUHCA, was repealed on August 8, 2005. A milestone was repealed on August 8, 2005. Mid-American preferred stock into voting common shares on February 9, 2006. This conversion ended a diluted corporate management that PHTA had forced upon us. Now we have 83.4% of both the common stock into votes at Mid-American, which allows us to consolidate the companies and come for financial accounting and tax purposes. Our true economic interest, however, is the aforementioned 80.5%, since there are options outstanding that are sure to be exercised within a few years that upon exercise will dilute their ownership. Though our voting power has increased dramatically, the dynamics of our four-party ownership has not changed at all. We view Mid American as a partnership among Berkshire Walter Scott and two terrific managers. They've to call Greg Abel. It is important, important how, how many votes each party has. We'll make major votes only when we are unanimous in thinking them wise. Five years of working with Dave, Greg, and Walter have underscored my original belief Berkshire couldn't have better partners. You will notice that this year we have provided you with two balance sheets, one representing our actual figures per GWP on December 31, 2005, which is not consolidated mid. American and one that reflects a subsequent conversion of our preferred. All future financial reports of Berkshire will include mid American figures. Someone incongruously mid American owners, the second largest real estate brokerage firm in the US, and it's a gem. The parent company names its home service of America, but a 9,200 agents operate through 18 locally branched from eight industry small acquisitions. We participated in 64 billion dollars from Jack last year up 6.5 percent from 2004. Currently, the white hot market in residential real estate of recent years is cooling down and that should lead to additional acquisition possibilities for us. Both we and Ron Peltier and company CEO expect home service to be far larger decade from now. Here are some key figures on Mid-Americans operations. UK utilities, Iowa utility, pipeline, home services, other income loss from discounted zinc project earnings before corporate Interest in taxes, interest other than Berkshire, interest on Berkshire Junior debt, income tax, debt earnings, earnings applicable to Berkshire, debt owned to others, debt owed to Berkshire, includes interest earned by Berkshire net of related income taxes of $102. Dollars in 2005 and $110 in 2004. Earnings in millions, 2005, 308. 
dollars two hundred eight two hundred eighty eight three hundred nine one hundred forty eight one hundred seven eight two thousand four three hundred twenty six two hundred sixty eight two hundred eighty eight one thirty one seventy five hundred seventy nine one thousand one hundred sixty eight two hundred one fifty seven two hundred forty eight six hundred five two hundred twelve one hundred seventy fifty three two hundred sixty eight two hundred one fifty three five hundred sixty three total one hundred seventy total five hundred twenty two ten thousand two hundred ninety six one thousand one hundred eighty two hundred eighty one hundred eighty two hundred eighty three hundred eighty four hundred eighty five hundred eighty six hundred eighty seven hundred eighty eight hundred eighty nine hundred eighty ten hundred eighty eleven hundred eighty twelve hundred eighty thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty ten hundred twenty eleven hundred twelve hundred thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty ten hundred twenty eleven hundred twelve hundred thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty ten hundred twenty eleven hundred twelve hundred thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty ten hundred twenty eleven hundred twelve hundred thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty ten hundred twenty eleven hundred twelve hundred thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty ten hundred twenty eleven hundred twelve hundred thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty ten hundred twenty eleven hundred twelve hundred thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty ten hundred twenty eleven hundred twelve hundred thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty ten hundred twenty eleven hundred twelve hundred thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty ten hundred twenty eleven hundred twelve hundred thirteen hundred fourteen hundred fifteen hundred sixteen hundred seventeen hundred eighteen hundred nineteen hundred twenty hundred twenty one hundred twenty two hundred twenty three hundred twenty four hundred twenty five hundred twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred twenty eight hundred twenty nine hundred twenty 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 hundred
It could be a different story for others in the future. Imagine if you own one or more firm shovel soften spread with positions that are many multiples of ours attempting to liquidate and chaotic the markets under the extreme and more publicity pressures. It's a scenario to which much attention should be given now rather than the fact that the time of consideredness improved the reliability of New Orleans leaves before Katrina. When we finally wind up in general securities, my feeling about its departure will be akin to those expressed in the country song. My wife ran away with my best friend. I sure miss him a lot. Below are the results of our various finance and financial product services. Trading, ordinary income, general securities, lost life and unit operations, value capital loss, leasing operations, manufactured housing, finance, clade and other, income before capital gains loss, trading capital gains loss is total. Pre-tax earnings includes all liabilities. Pre-tax earnings, 2005, $200, 104, 11, 33, 173, 416, 159, 822, 234, $488, 2004, $464, 44, 57, 30, 92, 192, 107, 584, 1,750, 2,334. Interest bearing liabilities, 2005, 1,061, 2,617, 1,461, not available. 370, 9,299, not available. 2004, 5,751, 5,437, 2,467, NA, 391, 2,636, NA. Manufacturer service and retail operations. Our activities in this part of British are covered the waterfront. Let's look through, though, at our summary balance sheet and earnings statement from the entire group. Assets, cash equivalents, account, and notes receivable, balance sheet 123105 in millions. Inventory, other current assets, total current assets, goodwill, and other intangibles, fixed assets. $1,004 to 2,287, 4,443, 4,143, 42, 800, 776, 9,260, 7, $1,021, $26,205. Liabilities and equity, notes payable, $1,469. Other current liabilities, 5,371. Total current liabilities, 6,840. Deferred taxes, 338. Term debt and other liabilities, 2,188. Equity, 16,839. 26,205. Earning statements and million dollars. Revenues, 2005, 2004, 2003. Operating expenses including depreciation of $699 in 2005 and $676 in 2004 and 605 in 2003. Interest expense net, pre-tax earnings, income taxes, net income, 44,190, 83, 2,623, 977, 1,646 dollars, 41,604, 57, 2,481, 941, 1,540, 29,885, 64, 2,157, 813, 1,344 dollars. This eclectic collection which sells products ranging from Delhi Bar's professional interest in Boeing 737s earned a very respectable 22.2% on average tangible net worth last year. It's noteworthy also these operations used only major financial leverage achieving their return. Clearly, we own some terrific businesses. We purchase many of them, however, at substantial premiums to net worth, a point reflected in the goodwill item shown in the balance sheet, and that fact reduces the earnings on an average carrying value to 10.1%. Here's the pre-tax earnings for the larger categories or units. Pre-tax earnings in million dollars. Building products, 2005, 2004, 749, 643. Shawn Industries, 2005, 2004, 485, 466. Apparel and footwell, 348, 345. Retailing for jewelry, home furnishing, candy, 257, 215. Flight services, 120, 191. McLean, 217, 228. Other business, 445, 413. Total, $2,623. $2,481. In our both products, companies at the shop, we continue to be hit by rising cost of raw materials and energy. Most of these operations are significant uses of oil, or more specifically, proto-chemicals and natural gases, and prices for these commodities have soared. We likewise have raised prices on many products, but they're often less before increases become effective. Nevertheless, both of our building products operation and Shaw delivered respectable results in 2005, a fact attributable to their strong business, ma- business franchise and able managements. In apparel, our largest units, fruit of the loom, again, increased earnings and market share. You know, of course, our leadership position in men's and boys' underwear, in which we account for about 48.7% of the sales recorded by mass marketers, Walmart, Target, etc., that up from 44.2% in 2002 when we acquired the company. Operating from a smaller base, we have made still greater gains in the imitated apparel for women and girls. That has sold by the mar- mass marketers, climbing from 13.7% of their sales in 2002 to 24.7% in 2005. Again, like that in a major category, this doesn't come easy. Thank John Holland, Fruit's extraordinary CEO, for making this happen. I told you last year that Ben Burch Jewelry and R.C. Willey Home Furnishing had same store sales gains for above the average of their industries. So you might think that blowout figures in one year would make comparisons difficult in the following year, but Ed and John Bridge 
Other operations, Scott Hymas at R.C. Wheelie were more than up to just challenge. Ben Bridge has 6.6%. Same story gain in 2005, and R.C. Wheelie came in at 2.9.9. Our never ends on Sunday approach at R.C. Wheelie continues to overwhelm seven-day competitors as we roll out stores in new markets. The Boise store about which I was such a skeptic a few years back had a 21% gain in 2005, coming off a 10% gain in 2004. Our new Reno store opened in November, broke out of the gate fast with sales and exceeded Boise's early place, and we will begin business in Sacramento in June if this store succeeds as I expected the Californians will see many more RC Wally stores in the years to come. In flight services, earnings improved flight safety score for it. Revation continued to rebound to support growth. We invest heavily in new simulators. Our most recent expansion brings us to 42 training centers. Expansion brings a major facility at Farnborough, England that opened September when it's fully built out in 2007. We'll have invested more than $100 million in the building. It's a 15 centimeters. Bruce Whitman, Flight Safety's Able TAO, make sure that no competitor comes close to offering the breadth and depth of services that we do. Operating results at NetJets were a different story. I said last year that this business would earn money in 2005, and I was dead wrong. Our European operations should be noted show both excellent growth and reduced loss. Customer contracts are increased by 37%. We are only fractional ownership operation of any size in Europe and are now pervasive. Presence is a key factor in making NetJets a worldwide leader in this industry. Despite a large increase in customers, however, U.S. operations dipped far into the red. Its efficiency fell and costs soared. We believe that our three largest competitors suffered similar problems, but each is owned by aircraft manufacturers. May, many think that we do go doubt the necessity of making adequate profits to combine value of the fleets managed by these three competitors. In any case, can needs to be less valuable than the fleet that we operate. Rich Tildy, one of the most dynamic managers I've ever met, will solve our revenue expense problem. He won't uh, do it, however, in a manner that impairs the quality of the NetJets experience. Both he and I are committed to a level of service security and safety that can't be matched by others. Our retailing category includes Seas Candies, a company we bought early in 1972. A date making our oldest non insurance business. At that time, Charlie and I immediately decided to put Chuck Hugginson in 46 in charge, though we were new at the game of selecting managers. Charlie and I hit a home run with disappointment. Chuck's love for the customer and the brand permeated the organization was in his 34-year tenure for these of more than tenfold increase in profits. This again was achieved in an industry growing best slowly, and perhaps not of all volume figures in this industry are hard to pin down. A year end, Chuck turned the reins at seas over to Brad Kinsler, who previously had served Berkshire while well running Cypress, Insurance, and Feckheimer. It's unusual for us to move managers around, but Brad's record made him an obvious choice for the seas job. I hope Chuck and his wife Donna are at an annual meeting if their shareholders can join Charlie and me giving America's number one candy maker a rich deserved round of applause. Every day in countless ways, the competitive position of each of our business grows either weak or stronger. If we're delighting customers, eliminating unnecessary costs, and improving our products and services, we gain strength. But we've teach customers with indifference or tolerate bloat, our business will wither. On a daily basis, the effects of our actions are imperceptible. Cumulatively, though, their consequences are enormous. When our long-term competitive position improves, as well as these almost unnoticeable reactions, we describe the phenomenon as widening in the moat, and doing that is essential if we are to have the kind of business we want a decade or two from now. We always, of course, hope to earn more money in the short term, but when the short-term and long-term conflict winding the most, next make pre- presidents, if a management makes bad decisions in order to hit the short-term earnings targets, and so consequently gets behind them, the eight ball in terms of cost, customer satisfaction, or brand strength, no amount of subsequent brilliance will overcome the damage that has been inflicted. Take a look at the dilemmas of managers in auto and airline industries today as they struggle with the huge problems handed them by their predecessors. Charlie's fond of quoting Ben Franklin's, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, but sometimes no amount of cure will overcome the mistakes of the past. Our managers focus on remote widening and we're brilliant at it. Quite simply, they're passionate about their businesses. Usually, they were running these long before we came along. Our only function since has been to stay out of the way. If you see these heroes and our four heroines as well, at the annual meeting, thank them for the job they do for you. The attitude of a manager is vividly contrast with that of a young man who married a tycoon only child, a decidedly home and a dull last relieved the father called in his new son in law after the wedding and began to discuss the future. Son, you're the boy I always wanted to never had. Here's a stock certificate fifty percent of the company, you're my equal partner from now on. Thanks, Dad. Now, would you like to run? How about sales? I'm afraid I can sell water to a man calling Sahara. Well, then, how about heading human relations? I really don't care for people. No problem. We have lots of other spots in the business. What would you like to do? Actually, nothing appeals to me. Why don't you just buy me out? Investments. We show below our common stock investment. Those that had market value of more than $700 million at the end of 2005 are itemized. Shares, 151,622,700, 30,322,100, 2,000,000,000, 6,000,000,000, 6,000,000,000, 6,000,000,000, 6,000,000,000, 6,000,000,000, 6,000,000,000, 6,000,000,000, 6,000,000,000, 6,000,000
1,724,200. Company, American Express Company, Emory Price Financial Incorporated, Anheuser Busch Cos, Cos Incorporated, the Coca Cola Company, MT Bank Corporation, Moody's Corporation, Petro China, Age Shares or Equivalent, the Procter and Gamble Company, Walmart Stores Incorporated, the Washington Post Company, Wells Fargo and Company, Walmart Mountains Insurance, others, total common stocks. Percentage of company owned 12.2, 12.1, 5.6, 8.4, 6.0, 16.2, 1.3, 3.0, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0
A normal dividend policy, of course, one third of earnings paid out, for example, produce less extreme results, but still can provide less shares for managers and who achieve nothing. CEOs understand this match and know that every dime paid out in dividend reduces the value of all outstanding options. I've never, however, seen this manager owner conflict of funds and proxy materials that request approval of a fixed price option plan. Those CEOs invariably reach internally to capital comes at cost. They somehow forget to tell shareholders that fixed price options give them capital, that it's free. It doesn't have to be this way. It's child's play. For a board to design options that give effect to the automatic buildup in value that occurs when earnings are retained, but surprise, surprise, options of that kind are almost never issued. Indeed, the rethought of options with strike prices that are adjusted or retained earnings seems foreign to compensation experts who are nevertheless encyclopedic about every management friendly plan that exists. Who's bad? I eat his song, I sing. Getting fired I can produce a particularly bountiful day, payday for CEO. Indeed, he can earn more than that single day while cleaning out his desk, and an American worker earns in a lifetime of cleaning toilets. Forget the old maxim about nothing succeeding like success. The day an executive tweets at L2, prevalent rule is that nothing succeeds like failure. Huge severance payments, lavish perks, and outsized payments for a ho-hum performance often occur because of com- committees have become slaves to comparative data. The drill is simple. Three or so directors not chosen by chance are boarded for a few hours before a board meeting with pay statistics that perpetually ratchet upwards. Additionally, the committee is told about new perks that other managers are receiving in this manner. Outlandish goodies are showed upon CEOs simply because of the corporate version of the argument we all use when children. But mom already has won. When come Committees follow his logic yesterday. Most egregious success to become today's baseline. Group companies should adopt the attitude of Hank Greenberg and Detroit slugger and boyhood hero of mine. Hank's son, Steve, at one time was a plaintiff's agent representing an outfielder in negotiations with a major league club. Steve sounded his dad about the size of the signing bonus he should ask for. Hank, a true pay for performance guy, got straight up to the point. What did he hit last year? When Steve answered 0.246, Hank's comeback was immediate. Asked for a uniform. Let me pause for a brief confession. In criticizing comp committee behavior, I don't speak as a true insider, though I have served as a director of Tony Public Company's only own CEO who has put me on his comp committee. Hmm. My views in America is a long-term problem in respect to trade imbalances, which I have laid out in previous reports remain unchanged. My conviction, however, cost Berkshire $995 million pre-tax in 2005. That amount is included in our earnings statement. A fact that illustrates the different ways in which GWP trades again lead into losses when we have a long-term position in stocks or bonds here to your change in value are reflected in our balance sheet, but as long as the asset is not sold or early reflected in earnings, for example, our Coca-Cola holdings went from $1 billion in value early on to $13.4 billion a year in 1998 and have since declined to $8.1 billion within of these moves affecting our earnings statement. Long-term currency positions, however, are daily marketed to market and therefore have an effect on earnings in every reporting period. From the date we first entered into currency contracts, we are $12.0 billion in black. We reduced our direct position in currency somewhat during 2005. We partially offset this change, however, by churching equities whose prices dominate in a variety of foreign currencies and that earn a large part of the profit internationally. Charlie and I prefer this method of acquiring non-dollar exposure that's largely because of changes in interest rates. Our U.S. rates have risen relative to those of the rest of the world, holding most foreign currencies now involves a significant negative carry. The carry aspect of our direct currency position indeed costs us money in 2005. It's likely to do so again in 2006. In contrast, the ownership of foreign equities is likely over time to create a positive carry perhaps a substantial one. The underlying factors affecting the U.S. current account deficit continue to worsen and no let up is in sight. Not only did our trade deficit largest and most women item in the current account hit an all-time high in 2005, but we also can expect a second item, the balance of investment income, to soon turn negative. As foreigners increase their ownership of the U.S. assets or of claims against us, relative to U.S. investment abroad, these investors will begin earning more in their holdings than we do on our finally the third component of current account, and the unilateral transfer is always negative. The U.S. It should be emphasized as restructural narration will get richer. As a result, the huge imbalance in its current account may continue for a long time without there having noticeable deleterious effects on the U.S. economy or in markets. I doubt, however, the situation will forever remain benign. Either Americans address the problem soon in a way we select or at some point the problem will likely address it in an unpleasant way of its own. How to Minimize Investment Returns it's been an easy matter for Berkshire and other owners of American equities to prosper over the years between December 31, 1899 and December 31, 1999 to give a really long-term example of the Dow rose from 66 to 11,497. Guess what annual growth rate is required to produce this result? The surprising answer is at the end of this section. This year's choice came from about separate reason. Over the century, American business index rose really well. Investors rode the wave of their prosperity. Business continued to do well, but now shareholders, through a series of self-inflicted moves, are in a major way cutting the returns they will realize from their 
investment. The explanation of how this is happening begins with the fundamental truth. With the important exceptions, there's this bankruptcies in which some company losses are borne by creditors. The most that owners aggregate can earn Bis- between now and judgment day is what their business and aggregate earn. True, by buying and selling, that is clever. Or lucky investor A may take more than his share of the pie at the expense of investor B. And yet, all investors feel richer when stocks soar. But an owner can exit only by having someone take his place. If one investor sells high, another must buy high. For owners as a whole, there is no simply no magic, no shower of money from outer space that will enable them to extract wealth from their companies beyond the created by the companies themselves. Indeed, owners must earn less than their business earn because of frictional costs, and that's my point. These costs are now being incurred in amounts that will cost shareholders to earn far less than they historically have. To understand how this whole has ballooned, imagine for a moment that all American corporations are and always will be owned by a single family. We'll call them at the Got Rocks. After paying taxes and dividends, this family, generation after generation, becomes richer by the aggregate amount earned by its companies. Today, that amount is about $700 billion annually. Naturally, the family spends some of these dollars, but the portion it saves steadily compounds for its benefit. And the contracts household of everyone grows wealthier at the same place and all harmonious. But let's now assume that a few fast-talking helpers approach a family and persuade each of its members to try out smartest relatives by buying certain of their holdings and selling them certain others. The helpers, for a fee, of course, obtainingly agree to handle these transactions. The contracts still own a corporate of America. The trades just rearrange who owns it. So, the family's annual gain wealth diminishes, equaling the earnings of American business minus commissions paid. The more that family members trade, the smaller their share of the pie and larger slice received by the helpers. This fact is not lost up these brokers. Helpers they release their friend in a wide variety of ways. They urge it on. After a while, most of the family members realize that they are not doing so well at this new beat my brother game. Enter another set of helpers. These newcomers complain to each member of the God Rocks clan that by himself he'll never outsmart the rest of the family. The suggested cure, hard manager, yes, us, and to get the job done professionally. These managers help Helper continues to use the broker helpers to execute trades, so managers may even increase their activities so as to permit the brokers to prosper. Still, moreover, all the bigger slice of the pie now goes to the exclusive class of helpers. The family disappointment grows. Each of its members is now employing professionals, yet overall the group's finances have taken a turn for the worse. The solution? More help, of course. It arrives in the forms of financial planners and institutional consultants who weigh in to advise the God Rocks on selecting manager helpers. The default family welcomes this assistant. By now, its members know that they can pick neither the right stocks nor the right stock pickers. Why one might ask should they expect success in picking the right consultant, but this question does not occur to God Rocks and the consultant helpers certainly don't suggest, suggest it to them. The God Rocks now supporting the three classes of expensive helpers find that their results get worse and they sink into despair, which as his hope seems lost. The fourth group will call them the hyper helpers. Appears these friendly folk explain to God Rocks that their satisfactory results are occurring because the existing helpers, brokers, managers, consultants are not sufficiently motivated and are simply going through the motions. What the new helpers ask can you expect from such a bunch of zombies? The new arrival of breathtakingly simple solution. Pay more money, brimming with self-confidence to hyper helpers to serve the huge contingent payments in addition to stiff fixed fees are what each family member must fork over in order to really add many diverse relatives. The more observant members of the family see that some of the hyper helpers are really just manager helpers wearing new uniforms, bearing and soon on sexy names like hedge fund or private equity. The new helpers, however, assure that God rocks that this change of clothing is all important in bestowing us wares. Managerial power is similar to those acquired by mid managed Clark Kent when he changed into his Superman costume. Come by the explanation, the family decides to pay up. And that's where we are today. A record push of the earnings that would go in their entirety to owners if they all just stayed in the rocking chairs is now going to a swelling army of helpers. Particularly expensive is the recent pandemic of profit arrangements under which helpers receive large portions of the winnings when they are smart or lucky and leave a family feast to boot. When the helpers are dumb or unlucky or occasionally crooked, a sufficient number of arrangements like this heads the helper takes much of the winnings, tails the god rocks loose, and pay dearly for the privilege of doing so. Many make it more accurate to call the family Hadrox today. In fact, the family's frictional cost of all sorts may well amount to 20% of the earnings of the American business. In other words, the burden of paying helpers may cost American equity investors overall to earn only 80% or so what they would earn if they just sat still and listened to no one. Long ago, Sir Isaac Newton gave us three laws of motion, which were the work of genius, but Sir Isaac's talents and extent to investing. He lost a bottle of the South Sea Bubble, explaining later, I can calculate the movement of the stars, but not the madness of men. If he had not been traumatized by this loss, Sir Isaac Millwell have gone to discovered the fourth law of motion for investors as a whole returns decreases. Uh, decreases. Here's the answer to the question posed at the beginning of the section to get very specific. The Dow increased from 65.73 to 11. 
11,497.12 in the time of century, and that amounts to a gain of 5.3% compared annually. Investors would also have received dividends, of course, to achieve an equal rate of gain of 21st century. The devil will have to rise by December 31, 2099 to brace yourself precisely to billion eleven million eleven thousand point twenty three. but I'm willing to settle for 2 million six years into the century the devil has gained not at all. Debt and risk. As we consolidate mid-American, our new balance sheet may suggest that Berkshire has expanded its tolerance for borrowing, but that's not so. Except for token amounts, we shun debt turning to it for only three purposes. We occasionally use report as part of certain short-term investing strategies that incorporate ownership of U.S. government or agency securities. Purchases of this kind are highly opportunistic and involve only the most liquid of securities. A few years ago, we entered into several interesting transactions that have since been unwound or running off. The upside in debt has likewise been cut substantially lean before long may be gone. Two, we borrow money against portfolios of interest-bearing receivables whose risks characteristics we understand. We did this in 2001 when we guaranteed $5.6 billion of bank debt to take over in partnership with Lucadia, a bankrupt Finova, which held a broad range of receivables. All of that debt has been repaid. More recently, we have borrowed to finance widely diversified, predictably performing portfolio of manufactured home receivables managed by Clayton. Alternatively, we can securitize that as sell these receivables but retain the servicing of them. If we follow this procedure, which is common in the industry, we would not show the debt that we would on our balance sheet and we would also accelerate the earnings of we report. In the end, our we would earn less money were market variables to change so as to favor securitization, an unlikely event. We could sell part of the portfolio and eliminate the related debt. Until then, we prefer better profits to better cosmetics. At MidAmerican, we have substantial debt, but it's company's obligation only. That will appear on our consolidated balance sheet. Berkshire does not, does not guarantee it. Even so, this debt unquestionably... <laughs> Secure because it's serviced by mid-American diversified stream of highly stable utility earnings. If there were to be some bolt from blue that heard of mid-American CDL properties, earning from others would still be more than ample to cover all debt requirements. Moreover, mid-American retains all of its earnings in equity build the loan practice that is rare in the utility field. From a risk standpoint, it's far safer to have earnings from 10 diverse and uncorrelated utility operations covered interest charges by, a, say, a 2 to 1 ratio than it is to have far greater coverage provided by a single utility. A catastrophic event can render a single utility insolvent witness what Katrina did to the local electric utility in New Orleans. No matter how conservative its debt policy, a geographical disaster, say an earthquake in a western state, can have the same effect. On a mid-American even warrior like Charlie can't think of an event that would systematically decrease utility earnings in any major way. Because of mid-Americans ever widening the diversity of regulated earnings, it will always utilize major amounts of debt. And that's about it. We are not interested in incurring any significant debt at Berkshire for acquisitions or operating purposes, conventional business wisdom. Of course, we would argue that we're being too conservative and that there are added profits that could be safely earned if we injected moderate leverage into our balance sheet. Maybe so, but many of Berkshire hundreds of thousands of investors have a large portion of their net worth in our stock. Among them, it should be emphasized a large number of our board and key managers and a disaster for the company would be disaster for them. Moreover, there are people who have been permanently injured to whom we owe insurance payments that stretch out for 50 years or more. To these and other constituencies, we have promised total security, whatever it comes, financial panics, stock exchange closures, and extended one occurred in 1914, or even domestic nuclear, chemical, or biological attacks. We are quite willing to accept huge risk. Indeed, more than any other insurer, we write high limit policies that are tied to single catastrophic events. We also own a large investment portfolio whose market value could fall dramatically and quickly under certain conditions, as happened on October 19, 1987. Whatever occurs, though, Berkshire will have the net worth, the earnings streams, and the ability to handle the primal with ease. Any other approach is dangerous. Over the years, a number of very smart people have learned the hard way that a long string of impressive numbers multiplied by single zero always equals zero. That is not an equation whose effect I would like to experience personally, and I would like even to be arrested spot for imposing its penalties upon others. Management succession. As owners, you are naturally concerned about whether I will insist on consult, continuing as CEO after I begin to fade, and if so, how the board will handle the problem. You also want to know what happens if I should die tonight. That's second question. Is the easy to answer? Most of our business have a strong market. Have a strong market position, significant momentum, and terrific managers. A special Berkshire culture is deeply ingrained throughout subsidiaries, and these operations won't miss a beat when I die. Moreover, we have three managers at Berkshire who are reasonably young and fully capable of being CEO, and if three would be much better at certain management aspects of my job than I. On the man side, none has my cro- crossover experience that allows me to comfortable ex- making decisions in either the business arena or investments. That problem will be solved by having another person in the organization handle marketable securities. As an interesting job at Berkshire, and now CEO will have no problem in hiring a talented individual to do it. Indeed, for what we have done at the guy who for done six years and our results have been terrific. <clears throat> Berkshire's board has fully discussed each of the three CEO candidates has anonymously 
uh, agreed to the person on the person who should exceed me replacement we are needed today. The director stay updated on the subject and condemn the review of circumstance and change. The individual stars may emerge and present once will age. The important point is that the directors know now and will always know in the future exactly what they will do when the need arises. The other questions that must be addressed is whether the board will be prepared to make a change if that need should arise for not from my death, but rather from my decay, particularly if this decay is accompanied by delusionally thinking that I am reaching new peaks of managerial brilliance. That problem will not be unique to me. Charlie and I have faced this situation from time to time at work here subsidiaries. Human states are greatly varying needs, but sooner or later their talents and vigor decline. Some managers remain effective and well into their 80s. Charlie is a wonder at 82, and others noticeably fade in their 60s when their abilities ebb so usually due to their powers of self-assessment. Someone else often needs to blow the whistle. When that time comes from here, our board will have to step up for the job from a financial standpoint. Its members are unusually motivated to do so. I know of no other board in the country in which the financial interests of directors are so completely aligned with those shareholders. Few boards even come close. On a personal level, however, it is extraordinarily difficult for most people to tell someone, particularly a friend, that he or she is no longer capable. If I become a candidate for that message, however, our board will be doing me a favor by delivering it. Every share of Berkshire that I own is destined to go to philanthropies, and I want society to reap the maximum good from these gifts and bequests. I would be tragedy of philanthropic potential of my holdings was diminished because my associates shirked the responsibility, but tenderly, I hope so, show me the door, but don't worry about this. We have an outstanding group of directors, and they will always do what's right for the shareholders. And one other subject, I feel terrific. The annual meeting. Our meeting this year will be on Saturday, May 6th, as always. The doors will be open at QA Center at 7 a.m., and the latest Berkshire movie will be shown at 8.30. At 9.30, we'll go directly to the question and answer period, which was a break for lunch. At the QA stance, will last until 3. Then after a short recess, Charlie and I will convene at the annual meeting at 3.15. The schedule works well last this year because it lasts those who wanted to attend a formal session to do so while freeing others to shop. You certainly did your share in this respect last year in the 1990. 194,300 square foot hall adjoining the meeting area was filled with products of British subsidiaries and 21,000 people who came to the meeting allowed every location to rack up sales records. Kelly Braz, Nee Mishamore, the Pelosi Field of Brickshire orchestrates both this magnificent shop extravaganza and the meeting itself. The exhibitors love her, and so do I. Kelly got married in October, and I gave her away. She asked me how I wanted you to be listed in wedding program and played envious of the groom, and that is the way it went to press. This year, we'll showcase to Clayton Holmes, featuring Acme Brick, Shaw Carpet, John's Manville Installation, New Tech Fasteners, Carefree Awnings, and NFM Furniture. You'll find that these homes priced at $79,000 and $89,000 delivery, excellent value, and factory shareholders came so firmly to the conclusion last year that they bought the $119,000 model we then showcased flanking the Clayton homes on the exhibition floor will be RVs from the Forest River. Geico will have a booth staffed by a number of its top concerts from around the world. All of them are ready to supply you with auto insurance codes. In most cases, Geico will be able to give you a special dis- shareholder discount, usually 8%. The special offer is permitted by 45 of the 50 jurisdictions in which we operate. One supplemental point, the discount is not additive. If you qualify for another, such as to give in certain groups, bring the details of your existing insurance and check out whether we can save you money. For at least 50% of you, I believe we can, while you're at sign, sign of the new Geico credit card, it's the one I now use. On Saturday, the Omaha Airport, we will have the usual array of aircraft from not just a for inspection, stop by the Natchez booth at the Queen West to learn about viewing these planes. Come to Omaha by bus, leave in your new plane. The Bookworm Boutique at the What QS broke all records last year selling Berkshire related books and amazing 3,500 of these were poor Charlie's Almanac. The collected wisdom of my partner, this means that a copy was sold every nine seconds and for good reason. You will never find a book with more useful of these. Word of mouth recommendations have cost Charlie's first printing of 20,500 copies to sell out, and we will therefore have a revised and expanded edition on sale at our meeting. Among the other 22,000 DVDs available last year, the book form, 4,597 copies were sold for $84,746. Our shareholders are booksellers' dream. An attachment to the proxy material that is enclosed with its report explains how you can obtain the credential you will need for admission to the meeting. In other events, as for plane, hotel and car reservations, we have again signed up American Express, 800-799-6634, to give you special Help. Carl Pedersen, who handles these matters, does a terrific job for each year, and I thank her for it. At Nebraska Furniture Mart, located in 77 acre site on 72nd Street between Dodge and Pacific, we will even be having Berkshire Weekend pricing. We initiated this special event at NFM nine years ago in sales during the weekend. It grew from $5.3 million in 1997 to $27.4 million in 2005, up 9% from a year earlier. I get goosebumps just thinking about this volume. To obtain the discount, you must make your Purchases between Thursday, May 4, and Monday, May 8, inclusive, and also present your meeting credential. The period special pricing will even apply to the products of several prestigious manufacturers that normally have iron credit rules against discounting, but that in the spirit of our shareholder weekend have made an exception for you. We appreciate their cooperation. NFM is open from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. 
and 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday and Saturday this year from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. We are having special fare for shareholders only. I'll be there eating barbecue, drinking coke, and counting sales. Board times again will have two shareholders only events. The first will be cocktail reserve from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Friday, May 5. The second, the main deal will be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday, May 7. On Saturday, will be open until 6 p.m. We will have huge crowds at board times throughout the weekend. For your convenience, your for shareholder prices will be available from Monday, May 1 through Saturday, May 13. During that period, just identify yourself as shareholder through your meeting credentials or a brokerage statement. Board times operates on a gross margin that even before the shareholder's discount is fully 20 percentage points below that of its major rivals. Last year, our shareholders' period business increased 9% from 2004, which came on top of a 73% gain of the year before. The store sold 5,000 British Air Monopoly games and then ran out. We've learned plenty will be in stock this year. In attend the outside boards, Hems, Patrick Wolf, twice U.S. champion, will be taken all comers in groups of six blindfolded. Additionally, we will have Bob Hammond and Sharon Osbrick, two of the world's top bridge experts, available to play with, with our shareholders on Sunday afternoon. They plan to keep their eyes open, but Bob never sources cars even when playing for a national championship. Gord's my favorite stake will again be ex- open exclusively for British shareholders on Sunday, May 7, and will be serving from 4 p.m. until 10 p.m. Please remember that to come to Gardens on that day, you must have a reservation to make one. Call 402-551-3733 on April 1, but not before. In this school year, about 35 university classes will come to Omaha for sessions with me. I take almost all and aggregate perhaps 2,000 students to launch at Gordon's, and they love it. To learn why, come join us on Sunday. We will again have a special reception for 4 to 5.30 on Saturday afternoon for shareholders who have come from outside of North America. Every year our meeting draws many people from around the globe, and Charlie and I want to be sure we personally greet those who have come so far. Last year we enjoyed meeting more than 400 of you from many dozens of countries. Any shareholders who comes from other than the U.S. or Canada will be given a special credential instruction for attending this function. Charlie and I are extraordinarily lucky. We were born in America. I had terrific parents who saw that we got good educations, have enjoyed wonderful families and great health, and came equipped with a business gene that allows us to prosper in a manner hugely disproportionate to other people contribute as much or more to their society's well-being. Moreover, we have long had jobs that we love in which we are helped every day in countless ways be talented by talented Sheerfeld associates. No wonder we tap dance to work, but nothing is more fun for us than getting together with our shareholders, partners at Brickshire Annual Meeting. So join us May 6th at QS for an annual Woodstock for Capitalist. We'll see you there. Robert 28, 2006, Warren E. Buffett, Chairman of the Board.